Second talk for the day uh, in this track, it will be Grutz, and he'll be presenting a very interesting topic. Uh, it became a little controversial actually over Turcon because he was planning to disclose something that uh, HP uh, asked him not to disclose because they're not ready with uh, resolution for it. And um, right after Turcon, on the Monday, they actually publicized uh, the vulnerability. So, it, yeah, one of them. Okay. So, anyway, he'll tell you more about this. Uh, no, it's the same mic. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, um, so we're talking about a country's honorable network devices here. Uh, a little bit of background. If you type in Huawei routers, the first thing that comes up is DEF CON security and hacked and hacked at DEF CON. Uh, so that's pretty damn cool. So I do have to add a disclaimer here that uh, everything in here is an opinion. It's a statement of myself. It's not as my employer. Um, the information is being provided as is, convenience for, informational. Uh, there's no pets were harmed at this talk, maybe yet, maybe later. Um, it may be too intense for some people from some countries or companies. So also, I don't care about the politics of Huawei and the US and ZTE and all the other crap going on. Uh, I use China as a good example because they have the largest representation of the devices I was looking at. And about, a little bit about myself, I'm a pen tester. I'm in the business of breaking into business, business, business. And if, I don't know if you can, let me see if you can hear this. I'll go back, but here we go. I know you saw the 60 minute interview, it's pretty damn funny. Huawei is a business. No, you can't. Business. It ba basically he says, he, Huawei is in the business of the business of doing business. And honestly, I have no clue what the hell that means, but I thought it was pretty fun. So a quick timeline here um, about Huawei and 3Com. So back in uh, 2006, Huawei became partnered with 3Com. Uh, in 2007, they renamed themselves H3C. And uh, later on, they, Bain Capital decided, hey, we, wanna, we want in on that. You know, we want to make lots of bucks. Uh, the government said, no fucking way. Uh, HP then acquires them not too long ago, and so now we have um, Huawei and ZTE having a big smackdown. So Huawei and HPC are not the same company anymore. They, they're different. They're totally separate, except when they're the, kind of the same, because they had this partnership. They had this company together. So some of the things that FX talked about affect H3C devices. Some of the things I talk about affect Huawei devices. So there is this in-between time, this four years, where things were kind of mixed and together. So when FX came out with his uh, DEF CON bomb, I was, I was also researching at the same time, very independent. At the, uh, so I, I texted somebody, I said, I feel like fat man to his little boy, you know? Because he came, he dropped this huge bomb, and I'm coming out and say, uh, boom. But as my uh, friend said, fat man ended the war. Not that there's a war going on, but and Huawei came back and said lots of words about, yes, we're really in on making our things better and secure, because they have to. Uh, and actually, they've gotten better in the last few months. So let's talk about his Big Bang a little bit. FX had some cool offsets, but, or some cool overflows, but you know, as anyone who's used overflows, they're kind of iffy. Sometimes that payload gets corrupted. Sometimes the mic goes out. All right. So, overflows are cool, but they're finicky, and sometimes they just don't work. So, how many times are you doing like a, a trying to get on a router? You use an overflow. Very few times. You don't want to take the router out because that's where your information. That's how you're passing things across. So, but how many times do you use SNMP to get a configuration to download things? Um, often, all the time, actually. Can Can you guys hear me in the back over there? All right, cool. So which would you rely on if you had to go in and break into something? A buffer overflow or SNMP? SNMP. So being the confusing screw-ups that are HTC and Huawei and, and, and the world, they have two different MIBs. Basically, if you see 25506, this is the, um, the new style, and 201110, that's the, that's the old style. They both work in most devices. So here's the little steps to go download a configuration. Pretty simple. Every, every device 
or most you know, Cisco devices have this. Uh, the, the Huawei devices and H3C devices have these. You go in and, and you say, all right, pull me the configuration. Pull it through FTP, TFTP, uh, give me the starting, the, the running, yay. Send it through FTP, whatever. Of course, being Huawei uh, and H3C, they don't always work, uh, which is typical. Um, downloads are logged. Uh, read write community string, it's buggy. Um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it wouldn't work. So a little script here. Say, all right, try both of them or, or try one or the other. You just go download it. This is all available on the um, uh, GitHub repository for PT tools for H3C. So typical general, yeah, just download a configuration, get caught, et cetera. Um, but of course, they, they had this cool MIB called H3C user. Um, it's gone through many different revisions, but it has some cool things. It has one that says username, one that says password, one that says authentication mode. Now, your password can be stored in three different ways in, in Huawei and H3C devices. It can be clear text, this ciphertext encryption, they call it, and now recently a SHA-256. Uh, SHA-256 is only for H3C. Look further in, we've got more user levels, so you got, you know, if you're admin or you're not, and a user state, can you log in, can you not? So if you look, they all have these max access of read create. Well, what is read create? Read create is supposed to be re above read write. So you're protected unless you're not, in which case you're Huawei and H3C. Um, probably a bug or a misunderstanding between you know, language barriers. So we'll take this MIB and we'll go down and, 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 and get a bunch of users out. Because if you have locally defined users, you're gonna have the ability to download them through SNMP read-only read strings. So we put that into Metasploit and we kit back, uh, you know, your admin, admin is clear text, and then you get this nice H3C, this nice cipher at the bottom. Looks encrypted. We'll talk about that in a second. So those are other SNMP goodies. Uh, you can get your PSK from uh, your uh, WPA if you have the private string. Uh, if also the SSH server is disabled, you have the read-write the read, the read string, you can enable it, which is pretty darn cool. So let's strap in and scan China. So we can go get China's net blocks. I got 2,444 net blocks as defined for this um, China cider.txt. I only care about SNMP, and so I'm going to use a tool called uh, 161 and start scanning for SNMP. So, leet script, you know, just go bash, branch out, do some SNMP outputs, and then you wait. Well, you can speed this up if you use multiple systems. I just used one. It was, it was okay for a while. Then you get results. We had 117,000 read-only um, strings for, for public, private, H3C, China, and telecom for Huawei H3C. We had about 88,000 that had private strings. So of those, you know, those devices, we have now a fair amount of potential access. If they have local users, then you really do have access. And of course, you know, I had to put in ZTE devices and Cisco and Junipers and some VxWorks because, you know, I have to have a real curve here. We compare that with Shodan HQs, and we're about the same. You know, they say 85,000 for H3C only. So 83,000, you know, 117,000, about the same, close to enough. So to break it down with um, locally defined accounts, we had 15,000 that had uh, devices with users on them. Only 5,000 had ciphertext. 15,000, the rest of them had clear text passwords in the configurations. So now we have a total of 33,000, almost 34,000 unique total accounts, 3,000 unique ones, almost 4,000 uniques. Uh, 2,000 had the username and password the same and 686 unique devices. And so majority of the, um, the clear text only passwords came from one telecom company. They had a bunch of access points throughout China with the default um, login string when you create a user. So basically it's, the, it's a simple uh, uh, text string that gets added. 
So what kind of local accounts are these? Well, they're local users for remote management, but they're also VPN users. In most cases, SSH, Telnet, and HTTP were open, so you could use you know, FX's overflows and HTTP or a session uh, interjector, or you can just log on locally with, or log on with the cred credentials here. So you've got multiple ways to pwn you know, many different devices in a specific country. Um, you know, China has the lost largest amount. I think Brazil is the second largest. Um, and then India is growing and, and throughout most parts of Asia. And in, in the US, we probably have quite a bit of H3C um, hopefully coming up. If we break this down, uh, Huawei H3C VRP devices, which are kind of the routers, we had about 2,000 of those. We had 464 sec blade, sec path blade path firewalls. You know, these are VPN systems in most cases. So you had about 400 VPN different devices you can log into, uh, in some ways, uh, VPN through them. Access points, 2,000, and quid wave of 3,000. So a, a pretty you know, wide range of different ty device types, at least. So let's talk about that cipher. Um, Huawei and, and H3C are not unique in doing bad encryption or bad ciphers. Uh, Cisco's Type 7, you know, Juniper's Type 9, basically. Uh, these are meant to be used so that they're not storing things in clear text, but they need to be used in some way. That could be like for uh, HSRP or MD5 authentication through BGP, et cetera. So why not just ROT32, ROT13 them? It's kind of the same. So when I was doing this research, when I, when I first interested in it, I, I started looking at the ciphers and I noticed something about them. Maybe you can too as you go through. They seem to have a pattern as, as you add these in. Um, you, know, you can see that eh, the first part's unique, most part, and then it starts going Q equals caret Q, MAF4. So you want some more examples? Just fucking Google it. They're all over the place. In fact, we had, what is that, um, 57,000 results. So this means something. Well, it does. The ciphers are 24 uh, or 88 characters in length. This is all in the documentation. Um, there's an a exclamation at the end. So maybe is it base 64 they're doing some queer you know, rotational thing? No. No, they weren't doing base 64. But it's consistent. Um, you know, when the, when the password is greater than eight characters, it's, it's, just, it's just too consistent. So maybe hopefully you can see this. When you have consistent text, it's probably uh, like an EBC, you know, a, a block cipher. Because as you, you know, take different characters or, or different strings in them, you take A, 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 you know, pat it out so you have enough length for DES, um, you have a very similar endpoint or is a very similar end because it's just breaking it into eight, character, eight byte blocks and encrypting and then doing the next eight. So it's very, very consistent. They don't do any cycling of, of information. So my assumption was they're doing something like DES. Um, they're probably using a static key. They're taking this output, doing some null padding, and then making a binary data out of it. And then taking that, um, Taking that, so they're taking your clear text, padding it out, you know, encrypting it with DES, and then converting it to ASCII. Why not base 64? I don't know. Maybe because they thought this is, you know, more superior. Who knows? So we figured it out that they were doing a simple ASCII conversion in four byte groups, taking group one, you know, going from the beginning of the, of the character to the end in four byte blocks, taking the first group, checking it to see is it equal to question mark. If it's not, you know, begin with a check value of A, sorry. Go through the first check. If the first character is A, then check, change the check value to question mark. Go to the second character, do some more, do some more fun. All right. And in the end, in the end you're gonna have, here we go. In the end, you're going to have all, all this converted from this ASCII into 
a, a, a binary value or a, an array of binaries, which you then decrypt with a static key, which is hex 1, hex 2, hex 3, hex 4, hex 5, hex 6, hex 7, hex 8. Thank you. It's a pretty simple, dumb thing. So what, is, what does Huawei do to think they can fix it? Huawei decides to use AE256 because it's better, right? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, I haven't seen any output from these yet to, to make a comparison. Uh, if we look at uh, HP solution, they say SHA-256. That's pretty good. You know, it's, it's a, a hash now instead. So you're not too bad. And it is salted. So you, know, you can take HPC, you get the salt, and you get this result. So you're going to have different results for each clear text. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how they're generating, you know, how they're combining the salt and the clear text yet. Um, but I, I expect in the next you know, week or two, when I get more time, um, or somebody else will figure this out too. Uh, if you know power, uh, if you know PPC shellcode or PPP, um, power PC, sorry, um, reversing, maybe we can help figure out what that, what's going on. I'm not a very good power PC guy. It took me a while to learn MIPS. So, so now, now what are you going to do with this information? Um, before we go to our, any any questions, anything? Cause I, I've got some drink tickets here apparently that I can give away for, for good questions. So. If not, I'll use them and drink, so that's fine. Sure. So what are you going to do? Well, sure. all your commands are logged locally. This is one of the, the really weird things about H3C and, and Huawei. When you type a command, it's stored locally. Uh, so there's a log that is in there. So when you go on a system, you then have to clear it out when you're done. So when you log in, the, first, the last thing you do is reset log buffer, and then you exit out, and no trace is there, except maybe you're logging in. Um, the keyboard keys are very annoying. I think FX talked about this. When you hit a backspace, it's not a backspace unless you hit Control H. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why they do these weird things they do, but maybe it's just so they can be different. How about creating a tunnel interface? Well, once you log on to a device, you know, like a, a good router, you can create a tunnel, go into Linux, create you know, your, your endpoint GRE, and now pass all your packets through you. That's pretty fun. So how does one protect yourself? Well, you have a nice AK-47, I guess that is, with the uh, Chinese finger lock. Don't use local accounts. Use Radius and TACX. Pretty simple. Don't configure SNMP v1. Pretty simple. Don't use default computer strings. Pretty simple. Obviously, not everybody follows these kind of things, so we have to tell it over and over again. Uh, you can disable the MIB if you can't upgrade or you can't do any of these other three things for whatever dumb reason. Um, and then use the SHA-256 passwords if your image supports it. Very few images for H3C do support this. Um, it's growing, but I haven't seen much of it yet. Obviously, this is my own independent stuff, so I don't have like a lab of you know, 16 different H3Cs and Huawei devices hanging around to do these kind of things. All right. Um, well, I am really quick on time. So we actually have 20 minutes here. I want to give a quick thanks to the Metasploit guys. Uh, when I first looked at this stuff, they kind of looked at it too, and, and the, the password string, and I said, this means something as well. Um, so we did a couple talks here and there. Uh, FX, the EMAs guys who also figured out the, um, the cipher independently. This is one of the really wonderful things about, you know, with the emergence of Huawei being, you know, a larger company that people are using outside of China, we're getting more eyes on these things. So we're finding out what's going on. And, you know, obviously the HP H3C cert and the Huawei IRT guys, you know, they do want to help to some extent. Obviously, they weren't very happy when I gave them through US cert, you know, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days. They said, nope, still need more time. Uh, and there are probably other people I've forgotten. Um, so are there any questions? Anything you want to see? Um, maybe you want to log on to a, a access point somewhere in China.
Or how about a SecPath firewall? You want to do that? Okay, nothing else? Thank you very much.